What's going on, everybody? Uh, January 4th, Thursday, two games slate. Because reasons. Had to have 12 yesterday. Couldn't, couldn't make it balanced in any way, shape, or form. Um, yesterday was really, really weird. Uh, had Jokic, not good. CP3, not good. A uh, large amount of Tabo. No game for Tabo. Um, had a pretty sizable chunk of DeJounte Murray. Six fantasy points. Started. Basically got a Bogans. Just awful. Just absolutely awful. But, silver lining. One of my lineups finished 33rd or something in the, uh, in the sharpshooter. So, I was plus money for the day. DFS. Don't understand it. Let's just dive into these two games. Uh, I bet when they made the schedules, these were like high quality games. And I guess the Clippers, in a way, is still a high quality game um, now that everybody's back. But man, that Rockets Warriors game lost a lot of luster with Harden having to be out now. So let's dig into it. That's the first game Rockets and Warriors. Uh, Rockets are a one and a half point underdog or is this the one I made up I made I made this one up so I have the Rockets as a one and a half point underdog at home against the Warriors it'll be somewhere in that area um, but there's no line out for it right now so let's check it out this game should have the higher implied totals um, you know, the Thunder are a bit more of a defensive team so that should Bring that total down a little bit but it's not as if you're avoiding any of these games or anything like that you've got to have obviously large chunks of both hokey doke so i don't see anything great for Ariza, and you know this is another one of those situations where almost everybody is in play on a two game slate it's hard to just like full stop say people are terrible um you'll see what i mean so, yeah, I don't love Ariza. Eric Gordon's fine. I mean, CP3 scares me in this scenario. Not the best game yesterday. Back to back with, you know, the best team in basketball coming to you. I don't like it for PJ. I just don't like it for the Rockets in general, but that shouldn't be terribly surprising. I think Chris Paul might be the only guy that I would like, like, but the rest of the game situation just doesn't look awesome. Maybe Capella? What's Capella's history against them? How did he do this year and last year? Couple solid games, okay. Well, let's look at it. Paul is 10-4 on FanDuel, 9-8 on DK. I actually like him a little bit. Um, but he's lower on the totem pole for me. And that's mostly because the guys in his salary range that are awesome tonight are probably on the opposite side. Capella, though, I like. Uh, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Um, I think that's a really good value for him. How many minutes did he play last night? I only played 23 minutes last night, so that's good. Um, he can take a bump in minutes tonight, no problem. Eric Gordon, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Not necessarily someone I love for tonight. Um, you know, he'll get, he'll see a steady diet of. 
clay, I would imagine. That's ah, just not, it's not the best. Look, everybody's getting ranked that's going to have minutes. I mean, Eric Gordon's going to play 35 minutes to say, like, I don't want a bullet of him is stupid on a two games late. But. Now, Ariza is someone I really don't like at all. But he's valuable in games like this because of defense. He's, you know, he's going to stay on the court as long as he can just because of guys like Durant. He needs to be out there. You know, Ryan Anderson can go either way here. He can either be a linchpin to what they need from spacing, or he can be played completely off the floor defensively. He's been a lot better defensively this year. Um, you know, got himself in a little bit better shape, which is definitely helping him. Um, it's just, it's all going to come down to corner threes for these guys. Or non corner threes, right? There's stuff above the break. Warriors aren't letting you get that easy stuff. I'm hoping Ryan Anderson's spacing can help. What's what's his what's his history been against the Warriors? I'm assuming it's boom bust, but Yep, so, you know, you get a 44-minute game last year, put up big numbers. I don't know why he only played nine minutes here. But I'm okay with Ryan Anderson. And then Gerald Green would probably, well, you know, I got to look at everybody, I guess, just because of Tucker's price on DK. Gerald Green, 4,100 fan duel, 4,000 on DK. Um... They can make the Warriors can make him look really silly. I don't need a ton of Gerald Green. Uh, man, I I don't like it. And then PJ Tucker, I actually do like. Again, he he should be the sort of guy that gets run in this sort of game. Forty four hundred again. Fan duel, 3,700 on DK. How did he play in the first one? I don't remember who was in and out at that point. Played 28 minutes. Oh, that was early, right? He That was one of those crazy early games where he went off. But either way, 3,700 on, on DK in a game that he should be... I don't want to say like a focal point because that would be a weird way to say it. But he should be... It's the reason he's on the team, to play the Warriors. Um, so, yeah. A lot, you know. I'm going through everybody, and then we'll take a look at how everybody tears up after this. Warriors now. Um, this is going to be uh, where the bread gets buttered, so to speak. So, we ended up getting like a couple inches of snow. The dog was interesting playing in that, and uh, I'm working from home today. Can't figure out if I'm going to play this slate or not. Um, okay, so Steph is amazing. Dra everybody's amazing. The prices on DK right now are stupid. So Durant is 10-5 on FanDuel. 8700 on DK. So DraftKings was basically like, what we're going to do is set the prices so that everybody takes the Warriors. Durant is tier one for me on DK. Um, but just in general, I think he's in a good spot. He'd probably be a tier two guy for me. I would, I would rather have... Curry on FanDuel than Durant. I think. Curry is 9,800 on FanDuel and 8,400 on DK. I mean, this is, it's comical how much value these guys have. Draymond Green, 
is 7,800 on FanDuel and 6,600 on DK. He is somebody that I do want to look at. Just because of, like, the... I want to confirm his health. God, that's just steady. Let's just look at... Everything since December 1st, just to make that chart look a little bit more palatable. So since he's been back, he's been you know, perfectly acceptable, like 1.2 fantasy points per minute. Um, I don't see any reason to not have a bunch of Draymond. He's a step down for me just because I don't think that his performance is as great compared to his salary, but it's still amazing. And then Clay is sort of the same situation as, uh, as Draymond. He's a step down behind Durant and Curry. And not just because of them being like better basketball players, but they just have a better, better profile for tonight. I can't see taking anybody else on the Warriors unless you're just throwing out a bunch of bullets you know Iguodala after not playing yesterday is probably someone to explore I'm just I'm nervous about all of the minutes for everybody Jordan Bell's too expensive you know he could have a big night in an ancillary role but you know again that's 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 big picture lots of lineup type stuff I don't necessarily trust Iggy or Bell. I want to hear more about like who's playing and shoot around stuff. But for now, the big four of the Warriors are the big four of the day, in my opinion. But we haven't gotten to the second game yet, which is Oklahoma at, El at the Clippers. Clippers at Oklahoma City. I don't remember where the game is. Clippers at Oklahoma City. Uh, Clippers one-point favorite at home. So let's check them out. And last night is just a weird ass fantasy game. Third day. No Tabo whatsoever. Murray plays 11 minutes. I honestly think the Embiid news like negatively impacted Murray. Okay, so. Nope, that's the thunder on the thunder. That'd be interesting. That late Embiid news and then the Drummond news. At least Boban went big. I wanted to go bigger on Boban than I did, but I just couldn't bring myself to it. I'm happy I had him in a couple lineups, so. He's really good. I, I mentioned it in the live stream last night. I'll mention it again. In my um, projection system, so I have rate stats for all of the positions and then I do I use the the standard scoring in this case I have the FanDuel scoring in here but it, it doesn't really change the picture too much so per possession this is my expectation of each individual guy Boban out of everybody that I have in my database is 26 on a per possession basis he just doesn't play but in the let's see how many do I have I've got 1800 possessions of Boban and he has played at a clip similar to, like, Nurkic. I mean, he's Kevin Love in these limited minutes. That's the most ridiculous thing ever. So I was cool with him rolling out there. You just It's so hard to trust. guy on Twitter asked, you know, in the, I answered this in a very specific way, but I, I agree with the answer regardless. At the time, Drummond was just doubtful, and they were, people were asking in the live stream about, um, taking Boban in cash, which I think was a horrible idea. And I think that's probably a horrible idea, even if you know that he's starting in that 
he's got a super large level of variability, and that's not necessarily what you're looking for. So I wouldn't have necessarily recommended Boban and Cash one way or the other, particularly on a 12-game slate where there's plenty of value out there. But in GPPs, he's the perfect GPP center in that scenario. Can't ask for much more. Okay, so now let's look at this. I'm okay with Blake, but like a big piece of Blake. Um, how does DeAndre normally do against the Thunder? Not the best sometimes. He has popped off. Okay. Oh, that's DeAndre. I thought Austin Rivers' numbers were saying that he didn't take any threes. I was like, that can't be right. Mm, nothing crazy. I mean, Taya Dosich is the only one that really like jumped off the page, and I don't really love that. Okay, so Blake is 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. I like him, but not a lot. Like a lot, a lot, I mean. He's fine. Like, it's, he's just fine. Well, nah, maybe I'm being overly critical. So what does he need? He needs 43 for value on FanDuel, so mid-40s, he can get there. He's just going to have a lot. Who guards him? Paul George? But obviously, Mello can't guard him. He'll roast the shit out of Mello. He's probably a two for me. Borderline three. Lou Williams, 7,500 and 7,200. Roberson playing? He's out, right? Okay, so if he's not playing, then that makes me like Lou Williams a little bit. I don't like the idea of DeAndre. He's further down the line for me. Austin Rivers um, on FanDuel, 5,300. On DK, 6,000. I mean, he's a he's almost non-playable for me on DK. Um, on FanDuel, however, you know, I think he's okay. And then the last guy that I want to look at, Taya Dosich. 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. I'm probably a little bit high on him. But, you know, obviously Russ isn't an impediment for him. If he can get going, it could be fun. But I'm a little bit lower on him as well. Just because he's got such glaring deficiencies. He needs... We need him to hit 30. Um, which he hasn't done at all. So I'm comfortable with putting him at a three. Let's look at OKC and close this out. It's just going to be a weird, weird night. I've already run, I haven't looked at it, but I ran 20 lineups for DK so we can see quickly how that pops off. Okay, yeah, like Russ a lot, like Paul George a lot, don't like Steven Adams. What's Adams' history against the Clippers? Okay, don't like, yeah, don't like Steven Adams. I like Mello. We could take a peek at Terrence Ferguson. So, Russ. Oh, 12-5 on FanDuel, 11-3 on DK. I just can't imagine wanting to prioritize Russ 
over Durant and Curry, particularly on FanDuel. Um, with that said, he still looks really good. I'd rather have Russ than Blake, given the two. Uh, Paul George, 8,400 on FanDuel, um, 7,000 on DK. He's a better play, a monstrously better play on DK than he is on FanDuel. Carmelo Anthony, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. He's probably a three for me. Just because he's not, I mean, he needs, I'll say 30, but like high 30s or mid to high 30s. He gets there from time to time. Like, he just squeaks over it. So, I don't know. He really, he, need, he needs to be, he's just not set up for that any longer. And then Steven Adams is 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Just, he's just like a no. I, I, I don't know if I'll have any of him. Last guy to look at would be Terrence Ferguson, um, just because he should get minutes at minimum salary. Um, he's not good. He hasn't been good from a fantasy perspective per minute. The only reason he gets bumped up here at all is because... Uh, I have a lot of regression to the mean, and he is nowhere near that mean. Um, I think you can take a peek at Ray Felton on DK, but otherwise, you're really rolling the dice, as you are wont to do on a two-game slate. So that's everything for me for those four games. Um... This will be applicable on both sites, so ignore that this says just says DK. The, the list is the list. Um, but Durant and Curry to me, and to, I would imagine, every other person looking at this stuff is going to say they are the two best plays of the day. And then uh, Russ, Blake, Lou Williams, Paul George, Capella, Green, and Thompson are my next tier and then I will rotate out the rest of the guys below that, at least for right now. I want to look deeper into Paul. I want to look deeper into, I mean, maybe just Paul. I don't, I don't see anything major that I would change. But, you know, the dude that wins the slate is going to be C.J. Williams or Sam Decker or something dumb. But anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Now let's see what comes up when I when I did this. So first 20 projections, or first 20 lineups, 95% Curry, 90% Durant, a lot of Anderson. Taya Dosich doesn't surprise me. I'd probably knock his, his projection down a point or two. Um, I think that he's being regressed a bit too heavily so far as well. Paul George, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson. All this looks super normal. Steven Adams being at 45% is the only one out of most of that that really jumps out at a number where I will I will make a change. Let's take a look at FanDuel. You'll note, I don't think, maybe, maybe I looked at that wrong. What was Westbrook? Is he on there at all? Yeah, no Westbrook at all on DraftKings. Doesn't terribly surprise me. On a two-game slate, it's really hard to take somebody like that in an optimal scenario and get um, and have him be in there. It, there's just it's so hard to be able to fit those pieces together when you don't have options.
All right, so FanDuel, 95% Ryan Anderson. No shit. Not that that surprises me or anything, but. I guess there's not a lot of options and he's the cheapest one there. So a lot of Ryan Anderson, Curry, Durant, and Thompson, no surprise. Gerald Green, not a huge surprise. So much different on FanDuel with having, like, you know, being forced into stuff like that. You know, Gerald Green has the best per thousand projection basically out of everybody so he's obviously going to show up a lot rivers mellow this one has a lot less adams more ferguson 45 percent cj williams didn't even look at him um I, I wouldn't be taking him he's really not very good i will try to avoid him i would I would try to avoid him. But yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. It's a really tough night. But I think having a lot of the Warriors is, is really the best option, uh, particularly on DK because of their pricing. It's just comically different. So that's what I'm looking at for right now. Um, I'll be around most of the day. Haven't figured out if I'm going to 100% play or not. I think I am... I, just because of the quality of the games, it'll be more interesting to watch. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll be around. So, you know, like, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter, the comments, or on Reddit. And um, I'll see you guys again in the morning. Uh, no live before lock. That should be self-explanatory. Bye.